name's Josh Kennedy. I'm, and uh, I grew up in uh, Albury, Wodonga, which is uh, uh, on the border from New South Wales and Victoria. In the last four years, I've been in Nagoya in Japan. This may sound strange, but everything just seemed really foreign in the sense that we couldn't read food labels. Um, you know, the, the signs on the road, obviously, in English as well as Japanese, but literally going shopping and to find a carton of milk. Uh, if it didn't say milk in English, uh, it was extremely difficult when we first came here to know what was what. One of the hard things was obviously first uh, finding a restaurant and knowing what's in it, and then uh, if they didn't have a, a translated menu, everything was in Japanese, so it was just extremely difficult in the beginning to uh, um, to order food. And then um, obviously with their currency, they got a few more zeros to our currency. So it was a bit difficult to pay in the beginning, yeah, definitely. The first thing uh, when I went to the club is uh, everybody takes their shoes off before walking to the change room and then they, they put on slippers or, or slaps to, to walk in the change room. So uh, it was quite uh, quite amusing to see everybody take them off and, and walk in the change room. And um, I think um, a, big, a big thing I noticed was how polite everybody was. Everybody was extremely polite in the way they went about things. Language is definitely uh, something that it took a lot, lot to get used to. Um, luckily for me, my coach is, is from Europe, so our training sessions are in English. Um, so in, in that sense, it was okay. But uh, yeah, language-wise, um, a, lo a lot of Japanese speak a, a little bit of basic English, so um, communicating through that and a little bit of sign language here and there. And um, as you know, the longer I've been here, I pick up a few more words and sentences and, and sort of get, you know can get around it. Translators there all the time. Um, obviously, translate everything from what our coach says to Japanese for the players. And uh, if, if I have to do an interview or something with, with Japanese magazines or press, then, then he's there to, to translate my English for the for everyone. Uh, off the pitch, I think the, the Japanese. As soon as you mention you come from Australia, there they have a smile on their face because they see it as a as a really nice place to live, and which is not too far away to be honest. You know, it's a similar time zone, um, and many of them. I either visit Australia or they want to go there, so it's sort of an icebreaker, and they're happy to, you know, see if you come from Australia. If you're a foreign person or someone going into another country, I think um, you know to obey their rules, their etiquettes, their their customs. It's extremely important, and you know, doing that, I think you uh, automatically gain the respect um, from the people who are living there. During the, the cherry blossom season, uh, Kyoto is close by as well, um, which is a you know the, it's an amazing sight to see, which only lasts for a couple of weeks each year. So um, that's probably one thing uh, you know I'll never forget to see the cherry blossoms here. Yeah, no, the, the funny thing is my my two year old son uh, bows to other other Japanese people and they bow back to him. So uh, it's just something I think um, yeah you get used to. Uh, people still shake hands here, but they. I think uh, the sign of respect is to bow and say thank you and nod your head. And, uh, yeah, I think just generally um, to be very respectful and polite. I think the Japanese, uh, that's in their nature. Um, so I think if you show those sort of customs yourself, um, it makes life a lot easier. Now Preciano. Preciano to kill it. Kennedy!